Oh, so here's my quick three shots in a row. So at this point, we have, there's two ways to get it out. So now we've made the edit, we got all the metadata, you know, what do we do with it now? And I, now I want to go back to something. So the first way you would go is you'd create, export it out in EDL. And what we've done is we've actually created a new template, and this should, go, this will be, should be in the next release, the next major release of the software, is actually um, we've added 16 characters. So it's a CMX3600 with 16 characters as the source tape. So that gives you, otherwise I believe it's four, eight, like some people keep telling me different, eight, eight, four, 3600. So this is 16, we've doubled it. Eight is not quite enough information, not, not enough characters in order to be able to distinctively tell which file is which file. So we made a 16 character one. And so, and there's my, and that's my um, EDL, and I can see there's my 16 characters. So that's enough, that's enough information so that I can see each individual file. So that's one thing that, that's one way to go, that you can get out of, uh, you can start with an EDL workflow like that. The other way will be with uh, FilmScribe. We're using FilmScribe and we'll actually export out. Um, and this is where we're working on right now. These are a bunch of little droplets at this point, but these will at some point turn into uh, an actual a GUI. And, and this is the, gre the great part about um, XML is that in essence anyone can write XML, can work in XML. We've, we've seen that. And so we're doing it right now ourselves. And, uh, and we're going to make an application that you could write your own uh, custom you know, uh, droplets that you would be able to put into the software yourself. So if you have some place specific that you want your, you know, to go to a different online room or different, you know, different editor, you'll be able to do that yourself. And people can, you know, post them on the internet, trade them, whatever. And so the workflow would be to uh, export out an XML out of, out of a FilmScribe. And so this is an example of a, a FilmScribe XML. And I would say, well, FilmScribe to EDL. So I would take this FilmScribe XM XML, drop it on the EDL, and I would make an EDL, right? Or I would take it and I would make a uh, HTML, and I would make an HTML. So wherever, wherever I wanted to go, so that's how you would do it. You would uh, uh, to red. So if I wanted to take my, my sequence and I would send it out, make create an XML that, you know, would go back to scratch. So you'd be able to just edit your whole sequence. We'd make an XML file with all the information in there. I mean, we, we, tra we track everything from you take a look here, it says uh, we got scale, right? We, we have offset, here's scale. So we're going to track all that metadata. We're going to track everything you can really throw at, at it. So when you're, when you're you know, resizing the clip inside of, uh, inside of, uh, inside of Red Cine or something, you're, you're resizing it, you're changing the scale, you're moving it, you're offsetting it, we're going to track all that data. It's, um, it's Mac and Windows, that's really great. So you can import, you can pull the files in, and uh, you can save an XML, and then we have the same, we have another, we have a droplet, there's an application that we're going to wrap in, and that will actually take that XML, the project that you save out of, out of, uh, out of Red Cine, and it'll turn it, we'll convert it to an ALE file, the same thing. We'll track all that metadata, like I was saying, we're going to track all of it, the color information, the scaling, whatever, whatever you can put in there, we're going to track it, we're going to convert all that to an ALE, you bring that into the Avid, it's the same workflow that I was describing, the only thing that, that's different is that Red Cine only allows you to ex, does not allow you to do reference quick times. So you have to really have to export it out of Red Cine. And that right now, this release, this current release, only allows you to choose 115. There's no other options. So if, you're, if you, bring your, you bring those uh, files into Red Cine and you go export, it only exports out, I mean, it exports out everything under the sun. You can imagine, it exports out DPX, exports out everything. But in, when you go, when you pick Avid DNX HD, it only exports out 115, and it really, really exports it. So you have to actually export it, and then you can batch import those QuickTime files. So it's a, it's a two-step process. What's nice is, though, um, it, uh, it actually will, talk about it, it actually lets you, allows you to put um, time, a time code burn in on it. So that's what you can't do uh, with Red Alert. You can't put like a time code burn in, no metadata on top of that QuickTime file. Uh, this allows for a lot, a lot of things like that. So, and then the same thing with Scratch. Um, you can actually uh, export out. We'll take that Scratch EDL, that XML file, and we'll um, convert it and turn it into an Avid Log Exchange file. So you can use Scratch if you want to do like a one pass through Scratch. Save out an XML file. I mean, this is you know XMLs are great. We love them too. And so um, we take an XML file and turn it into an Avid Log Exchange file. Pull it into the Avid. We'll map all the uh, all the metadata in the Avid 
and then batch import your QuickTimes. Same, same workflow. Uh, right? And so then the output, we're saying you, you would actually use FilmScribe. We're using FilmScribe just sort of as a, a, a conduit now. Um, and you would go into FilmScribe and you'd say XML, and it would take your sequence and export it out on XML. That XML could then be turned into whatever you want to uh, turn into. So we track all the, you know, the ASC, ASC color information, track all that information in the Avid as you make those changes.